Google it, Rowan White. Let's see. Keep in circles. Keep in circles. Yes. Okay. Oh, hello. I was just studying for our lesson today on theater vocabulary, types of stages, and stage directions. See, actors have to study really hard to make sure they feel confident with any material covered in whatever performance they're involved in because being prepared leads to more truthful performances. Think about actors who have to play characters who have special talents like playing a musical instrument or juggling. Or characters who have different professions like being a doctor or lawyer. Actors have to study really hard to portray these people convincingly and honestly. The following vocabulary terms will come up in future lessons, and knowing about different kinds of stages and stage directions will help you if you ever want to put on a play in your living room or your backyard, or if you ever get the opportunity to perform in a school or community theater production. So I suggest you take some notes. Acting. The art or occupation of performing in plays, movies, or television productions, and for our purposes, behaving truthfully under imaginary circumstances. Dialogue, a conversation between two or more people. Monologue, a long speech performed by a single actor. Given circumstances, who, what, where, when, and why of the play or scene. Setting, where the play occurs in time and place. Audition, a reading or performance of a monologue before a director to determine the casting of a play. Props, objects used by actors to help tell their story. Costumes, the clothing worn by actors that help determine character and time period. Script, the written text of a play. Protagonist, the main character in a play. Often, the good guy. Antagonist. The character who creates conflict for the protagonist. Open up or cheat out. To face as much towards the audience as possible. Diction. The actor's ability to be understood by the audience. Volume, the actor's ability to be heard by the audience. Q, the last words or actions indicating the time for another actor to speak or move. Ad lib, improvised lines by an actor used to fill an undesirable pause caused by dropped lines or technical issues. Aside, lines said to the audience that the other actors on stage are not supposed to hear. Build, to increase speed or volume, or both, to reach the climax of a scene. Blocking, the set movements of all actors on stage during the play. The fourth wall, the space which separates a performer or performance from the audience. It's the window through which the audience can witness the action of the play. The fourth wall is a good segue into our next topic, types of stages and stage directions. There are four different types of commonly used stages that we're going to cover. One type of stage you're probably already familiar with is called a proscenium. The audience sits out here beyond the fourth wall, which in this type of theater is also known as the proscenium arch. Proscenium stages allow for the actors to be hidden out of sight from the audience while still on stage. We call this hidden bit of stage, offstage or backstage. Some also have an apron or piece of stage that sticks out beyond the proscenium arch used for action that will be more effective very close to the audience. For instance, when a character breaks the fourth wall and talks directly to the audience during an aside. Here is a diagram of a proscenium stage. Another type of stage is called a thrust. A thrust puts the audience on three sides of the stage almost as if the apron of a proscenium stage was much larger and housed most of the action. Some thrust stages still have a proscenium-like portion that allows the actors to access offstage areas. Now, if you remove the proscenium portion of the stage and build the thrust out even farther, 
pushing the audience to one side or the other, we have what's called a traverse stage. This type gives actors two offstage spaces, one on either side. If you add audience seating to all four sides of the stage, then you have a theater in the round. Whatever kind of stage you're using, the stage is broken into segments used to establish blocking. If you remember from our vocabulary portion of this episode, blocking is the set movements of actors on stage during a play. These movements are choreographed and rehearsed so that the action happens in the same places every single time the play is performed. Let's take a look again at our proscenium stage, this time from above and from the perspective of the actor. When an actor stands in the very center of the stage, guess what segment they're standing in? That's right, center stage. As the actor looks at the audience, every segment to their left will be a stage left direction. Every segment to their right, a stage right direction. If they need to move to a segment in front of them, closer to the audience, they'll be moving downstage. If they have to move backwards away from the audience, they'll be moving upstage. Center stage. Stage left. Stage right. Downstage left. Downstage center. Downstage right. Upstage left. Upstage center. Upstage right. Fun fact. The reason that downstage is downstage and upstage is upstage is because the stages used all the way back in the Middle Ages and the early modern era were built on an incline. They were called raked stages. So upstage really was higher up off the ground than downstage was. Cool, right? Are you ready for your first homework assignment? I know what you're thinking. Homework? This isn't real school. Well, that's true. But remember what I said about actors having to study so they can deliver more truthful performances. This is part of that work. Plus, it'll be fun because you get to draw. For your homework assignment, I want you to draw a picture of a proscenium stage on a piece of paper. Once you have the stage drawn, label it with all the stage directions. If you need a refresher on stage directions, we'll list them at the end of the episode so you can pause the video and take notes or refer to them as long as you need to. If you'd like to share your homework with me, get the permission of a parent or guardian, and when you're finished, visit the website listed here. Then, click on the Submit Homework button.